Hi everybody, my name's Arlene Phillips and I'm delighted to be taking part in Curve Classroom. What I do is work as a choreographer. A choreographer is someone who puts all the steps together for theatre shows, television shows, films, music videos, and indeed anything I'm asked to do, live events. Um, and it's a lot of fun and I love my job. I'm passionate about it. And one of the other roles I played in life was one of the original judges on Strictly Come Dancing. It's a show I love then and I love today. And while I was doing Strictly Come Dancing, I wrote a book about a little girl called Alana, which is the name of my daughter. Um, who wanted to be a dancing star. Things were difficult at home and her parents didn't really want her to dance, but she fought hard and succeeded in going to the Step Out Dance School. So I'm going to read you one of these stories. It's called LA Moves and it's about when Alana goes into a shop, her life changes and she gets transported to the various countries in the world where the dance that she loves was created. This one is LA Moves and it's all about hip hop. So here goes Alana, dancing star. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Alana and her best friend Mina spun round and round the classroom practicing their waltz. They wanted to get the steps right and they could hear so much noise from the playground that they were not going to go and play out because they had the school talent show coming up and they were planning to do a waltz. It was over a year since they had last practiced and they needed to perfect their steps. The girls had been having a lot of trouble getting the rise and fall right, but as they went through the steps over and over again, Things started to come together at last. We're sorted, said Mina, as the dance came to an end. Yes, said Alana, we're totally on it this time. The girls gave each other a high five. Okay, let's do once more before the other, get, other girls get back. But just as they started the dance again, Lara and Alice came into the classroom and they started singing to the latest girls' unlimited track. You're my best friend, my soulmate, ooh, ooh, baby. And when they saw what Alana and Mina were doing, they started giggling and laughing out loud. What? asked Alana. Nothing, said Lara, but she was obviously trying not to laugh. Oh, come on, guys, said Mina. What's your problem? Well, it's just that... That sort of dancing really isn't cool, is it? No, I don't think it is at all. I suppose it's okay if you like that sort of thing, but it looks like just what my nan does when she goes to her social club on a Sunday afternoon. By this time, Alice had switched her music to the latest song by TJS. They were Alana and Mina's favourite band. Alana imagined the four boys dancing. They were so cool and immediately forgot about the argument and said, can we listen too, please? So Alice switched her iPod onto loudspeaker and the four of them sang and danced along. And as the class came in, more and more kids in the class joined in. Yes, TJS had the number one spot. Oh, they're so cool, they're so cool, they all shouted. Out of the corner of Alana's eye, she noticed, Sto she noticed Toby standing a bit apart from everyone else, but he was dancing, but looking very serious. Toby came to the Step Out Studios where Alana and Nina were studying but he always said he hated dancing. He said he only went to dance classes because his mum made him, 
but actually what he really wanted to do was be a skateboarder. So it was weird to see him dancing along for fun and dancing really well. But as soon as he noticed Alana watching him, he stopped and pretended to be reading a skateboard magazine. Suddenly, a scary voice brought everyone to a standstill. It was Miss Walcott, the form teacher, standing in the doorway, hands on hips. What is going on here, she said. This is a classroom, not a disco. Lara ran and turned the music off. And Miss Walcott silently held out her hand and demanded Alana gave her her iPod. Miss Walcott locked it away in the drawer. A disco? That's last century, said Lara. I bet she went to discos when she was young. Oh, it feels like it was a hundred hours ago since anyone ever went to a disco. She didn't realise Miss Walcott was standing over her. Is something amusing you, Alana? Uh, perhaps you would like to stay behind after school and tell me all about it. Uh, no, thank you, Miss Walcott. I, I, no, I have a dance class, please. Alana would have been gutted to miss it. But just as she was about to hear Miss Walcott's answer, the bell rang and everybody dashed off before Miss Walcott could stop them. They ran together, Alana and Mina, to the Step Out studio for their class. And as they ran through the playground, they noticed um, Toby practicing on his skateboard. Oh my gosh, said Mina, Toby's going to be late again. Miss Trina will not be happy. Chapter two. Miss Trina stood at the front of the class. Okay, everyone, she said, today we're going to do the foxtrot. Find your partners, please. Alana sighed. She usually partnered Toby and she was miserable that he hadn't turned up into class. Well, you can partner Matthew today, said Miss Trina. That's not fair, cried a very tall, slim girl. I'm Matthew's partner. Well, not today, Verity, you're not. Uh, I'll dance with you today, Verity, said Miss Trina. Verity was the richest and the prettiest girl at Step Out Studio. Her parents liked the idea, the idea of her being Matthew's partner because he was a great dancer, very tall, very strong and very good looking. His family was extremely well off, just like hers. They went to the same private school. They weren't really friends. Most of the dance students couldn't care less how rich everyone was. All they wanted to do was dance. But to Verity and, it, and her parents, it mattered that she was the richest and she was the best. Now, said Miss Trina, each couple is going to walk around the room until you move in perfect harmony. It's essential for a good foxtrot. After that, we'll work on the hold and the heel leads. As Alana and Matthew walked in time to the music, Verity kept shooting Alana horrible looks. And as they passed each other, Verity put her leg out and accidentally tripped Alana up. Alana gave a yelp of pain. Sorry, Alana, said Verity, smiling. Of course, if you had kept in time to the music, your feet wouldn't be in the wrong place for me to step on them and you to trip. Actually, said Matthew, Alana was perfectly in time. Verity's smile vanished instantly. After class, Alana and Mina were in the changing room, getting back into their everyday clothes, when Miss Trina came in. Uh, how's your waltz practice coming along for your school talent show? 
I love the sequence you girls put together and I'm sure you'll be doing a good job of it. Uh, my niece is also in the competition. She's singing a solo. Oh, we love our walls too, said Alana. But I'm not sure the others do, Miss Trina. They say ballroom dancing is so uncool. Miss Trina sighed. Sometimes, she said, you have to be prepared in life for people who don't appreciate the things that matter to you and that you love. You have to go ahead and do them anyway. Think about what you want, not what others think you should do. Alana and Mina looked at each other and raised their eyebrows. Miss Trina could see that her advice was not really helping. I tell you what, she said, you know, often the best way to make people change their mind about something is to surprise them. I'll bet they've never seen anything like your waltz before, so it really could work. Well, I have a feeling the kids in your class are going to love what you do. So there you go. That's a good starting point if you believe that. Now, hurry home. Your parents will be here to collect you. As Alana was putting on her jeans and trainers, she thought about what Trina had said and had an idea. The whole of the class love TJS. But what has TJS got to do with ballroom dancing? Oh, nothing. That's useless. It doesn't work. They don't do one, two, three, one, two, three. But without realising it, she'd been singing along to the TJS single and Verity came in. <laughs> You're not thinking of singing or dancing to a CTJS song, are you? I mean, their songs are so awful and so is their dancing. I think it's terrible. No, it's not, said Mina. Yes, what they do is street dance and street dance is totally vulgar. It's not proper dancing at all. You two would be into it, of course, because you don't know what's good. Look, said Alana, you don't have to like them if you don't want to, but we won them and they won, su we love them and they won Superstar Search. So, well, said Verity, my dad says television talent shows are mindless, entertainment for the masses and we don't watch them in our house. Alana knew that Verity was just being rude and couldn't be bothered to argue back. Chloe ran in. Ah, oh, are you talking about TJS? Oh, they're so cool. Verity, don't tell me you don't love them. Chloe was the happiest person Alana had ever met. Everything her in her life was good. She was clumsy and awkward and not a great dancer. But she had such a sunny temperament. Nothing ever seemed to bother her and everybody loved her. I'm sorry, said Verity. Did somebody speak around here? Yes, me, said Chloe. Didn't even realise that, that Verity was being mean. Come on, Chloe, said Alana, taking her by the arm and leading her away. Let's go and see if anyone here is going to pick us up. It's getting late. My mum's not here. Alana's mum, as usual, hadn't arrived. And one by one, everyone was picked up except Alana. I'll wait, said Mina. Suddenly, a voice said, Oh, Alana, do you want a lift? I'm here to pick Mina up. Oh, thanks, said Alana, but Mum definitely promised she was going to be here this time. So I'm, I think she'll be here any minute, in any minute. Alana didn't want to make a big thing of it, her mum forgetting to collect her. 
Uh, so she shouted, oh, she's there in the distance, she's coming. Mina and her dad went off. Alana waited and waited, but after half an hour, she set off to walk home. The mum didn't turn up and Alana was used to it. As she walked home, she thought more about what Miss Trina had said and if her class loved TJS, Alana thought, well, maybe we should just do a TJS routine, just forget about the wolves. But anyway, they didn't really have the right clothes for TJS. They were so hip and they wore what was cool. Alana didn't have any cool clothes. So she walked down the street and started to think about street dancing and not the wolves. As she turned the corner, she dreamt of being in a nice warm car, having a ride home instead of walking through the cold. She didn't notice that the corner shop was glowing and she realised she'd reached Madame Coco's Costume Emporium. The shop had an extraordinary effect on Alana because the last time she visited the shop, she was transported to the most amazing time as if a dream had come true into a world of dance. Unlike all the other shops on the high street, Madame Coco's windows was always hung with magically patterned clothes, strange and extraordinary. And the, sh the shop had a glow that attracted Alana's attention. And it was the only shop that looked like this, a magic shop. She was deciding whether to go in or not when it started to rain and she didn't have an umbrella and the shop looked so cozy, warm and inviting. And without thinking, Alana opened the door just to say hello to Madame Coco, she said, and maybe ask her if she had any idea what she should do about the talent show. Stick to her waltz, or maybe there'd be something else. Chapter three. The shop door creaked as it opened. And there in front of Alana was Madame Coco, folding up a beautiful pink tutu into tissue. And a tall lady with long black hair was waiting for it. Madame Coco put the tutu in a bag and the lady said, thank you, and walked out. Before Alana realised, that the lady was Isabella Starr, her favourite ballet dancer, who was a famous prima ballerina. As very soon she was gone and a voice cried, Aha! Madame Coco came towards her. My little one, you've come to visit me again. Why are you looking sad? Tell Madame Coco all of your problems. Um, it's true, I do have problems, said Alana, but I was just wondering, was that really Isabella Starr? Oh, said Madame Coco, I never tell anyone the famous people who come in here, but we have many buying their dance clothes. So you better tell me now what is troubling you. Alana sat in a pink velvet armchair in the corner and brought her, and Madame Coco brought her fresh orange juice in a crystal glass. There was something about Madame Coco that made, it in, made her incredibly easy to talk to. So, La, so Alana told her all about the worries of the school talent show, how she'd been practicing the walls, but it 
felt old fashioned while the girls felt it was old fashioned and she really wanted to make something of this talent show and she didn't know what to do and she hadn't really done very much hip hop or street dancing and would she be good enough? Madame Coco listened and said, I have something that may help you. She disappeared into the back of the shop and Alana thought, Maybe she's going to bring out a fabulous ballroom dress to make me feel like I can waltz like a dream in the talent show. But to Alana's surprise, Madame Coco wasn't carrying a dress at all. She was bringing out a cool pair of red slouchy trousers a white vest top with some silver sparkles, a cool cap, and the best pair of trainers Alana had ever seen in her life. They had flashes of neon yellow and blue, and the heels had a light up every time they did a step. Wow, that's so cool, said Alana. So what is this? Well, why don't you try it on, said Madame Coco. Alana was very happy to try on an outfit so cool. So she went into the dressing room and changed and came out and she thought, wow, I, I look older and cooler and none of my friends will even recognize me. Madame Coco said, oh, wait one moment. I have to do your hair. And quickly, she undid the plaits of Alana's rich brown hair and turned them into loose, cool plaits, tied them with ribbons and actually put on a tiny little bit of lipstick onto Alana's lips. So, who is this band you like? TBC? <laughs> no, TJS. Oh, isn't that what I said, said Madame Coco? Um, try and dance in the outfit. Try some cool street dancing. I don't know how. I mean, I mess around, I copy their routines, but I've never really trained. And then neither does Mina and we've promised we're going to dance together. Just keep the choreography in your head and just feel good and watch them a few times when you go home. You'll be able to do it, you will, you will. No, Madame Coco, it's harder than you think. They are just so good. But come on, give it a try, said Madame Coco. So Alana started to move. She thought of the music in her head and started doing her own moves and spinning around. And as she started to spin around, she started to feel a strange tingling and a noise and the music of TJS whirling around her and Madame Coco's voice going fainter and fainter. And she said, remember, Alana, when your good deed is done, the call of home will beckon and you will return home. You will return home don't forget, said Madame Coco. Suddenly, Alana's cool trainers ju jumped a light flashing and she was standing on concrete and hearing the hip hop beats vibrating everywhere. She looked like she was in a fast warehouse with bare floors, high ceilings, and enormous steel girders and pillars all around. And there were spotlights and TV cameras. And there was a dance group. They were amazing. She wasn't sure if this was all part of one of Madame Coco's planned adventures. She'd had two before, where she had landed in Vienna in the middle of a Viennese waltz. And also she'd landed doing the samba in Brazil. So maybe it was 
one of Madame Coco's adventures. The teenagers in the group were starting to stop their dance and chat away. My goodness, a lot of better hide, she thought to herself. And so she went behind a huge speaker. The kids all had slouchy black trousers like herself. And they looked fantastic. And their trainers were even more exciting than Alana's, the kind she and her friends could only dream about. Suddenly a voice shouted, OK, let's take it from the top once again. No tap, no talk. Here we go. The teenagers stopped chatting, moved into position, and a song was blasted out of the speakers and they performed the most amazing hip hop routine Alana had ever seen in her life. The rhythms were great and their body moves, their tricks, their spins. My goodness, thought Alana. They've had so much dance training and they look, well, not much older than me. How do they do it? They're so seriously good. Suddenly, just when Alana thought things couldn't get any more incredible, four guys arrived on the scene, stepped out in front of them and started singing her favourite song, getting closer and closer and closer. It was, it really was TJS right there in front of her. She was absolutely overwhelmed. She wanted to clap and cheer, but she couldn't. She had to stay quiet. She was hiding. Nobody knew that she was there. And then she realized TJS was shooting their new video and Alana was going to be able to watch it being made before anyone else. Okay, so now we're up to chapter four and I will continue my reading. But when you have a moment, start watching any group that you see on Instagram or TikTok or television. Just have a look and see if you can just try and think about putting a few steps together yourself. And even if you haven't had any street dance, it doesn't matter because I've got a challenge coming up and I'm going to want to see you all dance. Yep. So I'll see you next week. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.